So hello everyone and welcome to Molecular Biology and Biotechnology with Lucy. Yes, this is the place of biosciences, academics and health. And uh, today's live stream is on, uh, you know, non-cancerous forms of swelling, lumps, tumors and cysts. So welcome so much, even as we dissect. And you know, generally, in the issue that we are talking about today is that whenever we experience a lump or any form of swelling, the greatest uh, worry goes towards, could it be cancer, you know? And we know that cancer is quite a life-defining illness, especially when diagnosed late and there isn't so much success in treatment and therefore it declares some sort of a death sentence. So it is important for us to actually understand lumps, swelling, so that uh, we can also avoid, you know, the worry and the anxiety that goes around having such experiences in our body. And essentially, even if we don't see, we could actually be having other forms of swellings and lumps and cysts, as you shall be seeing, where we cannot see. So let us now look at uh, what are these different types of lumps, what are swellings, what are cysts, what are tumors, and at what point are they non-cancerous, and at what point could they become cancerous, or can they actually become cancerous, and so on. So we are going to start on uh, what is a lump. So a lump is a localized form of swelling. So a localized meaning at a certain or at a particular site. It could be on your neck, it could be on your head, it could be on your foot, on your hands, on your back, on your shoulders, on your groin, under the armpits. It can be anywhere as long as it's at a certain particular place and it's a sort of swelling. So they could include things like just a general bump maybe you have had an insect bite, a bug bite, so there is a, a, a localized swelling on a particular area, or you could be having what we call nodules. Uh, nodules, we can uh, give an example of pimples. You know, the pimples that are usually on our face, the acne that sometimes occurs during uh, puberty and can also go to adulthood. So those forms of swelling uh, are also called lumps. We can also have what we call contusions. Uh, for example, when you have a traumatic injury or just an injury, maybe you have been hit by a blunt object and so the blood leaks into the skin and causes a lump. We can also have now the tumors that we are talking about. So uh, now we have tumors uh, being classified as lumps and they can be what we call solid masses, okay? So a solid mass that is now under your skin uh, is what we call tumors. Now we have already actually given some of the reasons why they occur and I can just add a few. We have what we call infections. If you have an infection, you can have a boil. I have done a video on boils. Uh, you guys should check it out. So if you have a boil, then there is a possibility that it is going to form that lump either under your armpit on your groin area, etc. And that now is one of the causes of lumps. You can have an abscess or a lesion or a wound that can also cause swelling around a localized area. And then we can also have inflammation uh, caused by probably injections, vaccinations, you know, that cause that kind of swelling or even sometimes autoimmune diseases. For example, a, a rheumatoid arthritis can also cause lumps. Uh, we also have allergies uh, causing certain forms of infection. Maybe you have been bitten by something or, you know, you... You have eaten something that has caused, you know, itch, itchiness and rashes and therefore causing lumps on your skin. Uh, then, of course, trauma. I have talked about trauma. Maybe you have been hit by a blunt object and therefore causing a certain leak of blood into the tissue and therefore causing a lump. So those are some of the causes of lumps. 
And now, usually, uh, we are describing it as a form of swelling. So a swelling, on the other hand, we can see it's an enlargement, okay, of an organ or tissue or puffiness of an organ or tissue. And this one can actually be localized or uh, generalized. That means in a greater region on your body, it could even be the whole body. For example, when you have edema, you know, the swelling of your hands, the swelling of your face, the swelling of your feet, sometimes occurring due to hypertension problems, due to pregnancy. Uh, some people also swell on their feet because they have, you know, stayed uh start on probably for long and they have not elevated their feet you know we also have now other forms of infection that causes swelling for example ascites where we have accumulation of fluid and the, in the stomach cavity particularly in children yeah so that is what we call a swelling it can be localized or, or it can be generalized in the whole of your body and now, when do actually swellings and lumps become an issue? Because it's not all the time that they are an issue. If, for example, it's just a bruise. You have been hit by a blunt object. You know that once it takes a few days, then it is going to disappear. But there are times when now they can actually become problematic or they can become a cause of concern. Because lumps and swellings don't actually mean cancer. Uh, but they could also mean other underlying causes that are also not very healthy. So when do we have lumps and forms of swellings becoming an issue? One is when they are increasing in size. If you find that you have a lump for whatever cause and it is you know, progressively increasing in size, then that is a cause for a lump and you should seek medical advice then if you find that there's a lot of pain and a lot of redness on that particular local area, then that is also a cause for uh, alarm that, and you should go seek medical advice. Now, if you have any other chronic illnesses, then it is important to check because those underlying consequences or diseases can actually now become even more problematic. For example, if you're having hypertension, or maybe you didn't know that you're having hypertension, so you're having this constant swelling of your feet, of your body, then it is important to check uh, uh, or to have uh, more interrogation with your doctor so that you can ensure that there isn't anything that uh, is likely to be such a big problem. So those are lumps and swellings, and we are saying that most of the time, they have an underlying cause. But like we have seen, we also have what we call a cyst. So now a cyst as a form of a lump is now a fluid-filled lump or swelling. It is filled with fluid. This fluid can be water, it can be blood, it can be pus. Now, usually uh, in our body, you know that our body has a lot of water, okay? And therefore, if there is decreased or any form of reduced uh, drainage or flow or circulation of water, blood, etc., then there is a possibility that some that has some tissues can encompass and close up some water because of poor drainage. And that means that when we have such a sac that is fluid filled, it can actually occur anywhere. But there's also the places it's likely to occur where we have tissues and organs that have more water. For example, in the lymph nodes, we can have cysts developing there in our kidneys. We can have them in our ovaries. We can have them actually under the skin, just under your skin. We can have them in our lungs. We can have them in almost every part of the body. And therefore, usually a cyst has just encompassed water in it. So I can give examples of types of cysts that exist. There are people who have what we call cystic acne or acne that is extremely severe. And uh, usually now what that happens is that they have, you know, uh, acne that tends to accumulate a fluid and pass and sometimes even blood that persists for very long. So that is what we call cystic acne. I'm sure you have probably come across somebody who has persistent acne, uh, which is big, actually big nodules on their skin. And that is a form of cyst. 
and then we have uh, cysts that are caused by infections with parasites, what we call hydatid cysts. And hydatid cysts usually occur due to tapeworm infection. If you're infected with tapeworms, then you're likely to find hydatid cysts in our liver and muscle tissue. And then we have uh, what we call uh, labia cysts in our groin area, particularly for women uh, during the menstrual cycle. There are those small nodules that you're likely to find on your labia minora or labia majora, and you know they encompass some sort of fluids and then they actually disappear after the cycle is over. And then we have uh, other cysts that can actually encompass CSF fluidocelebral spinal fluid that can occur around your spinal cord, in your brain. So they have encompassed the fluid that is closest to them, that is the CSF. And then we have uh, what we call thyroid cysts that can occur on your thyroids. We have cysts in our lungs. We can have uh, ovarian cysts for women. We can have ganglion cysts. These ones usually occur around your joints, probably at your wrist area, at your hand joint. You know, there are many, 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 many forms of cysts. Now, uh, again, cysts do not have, we cannot really say we know the actual cause of cysts. But usually what happens is that, uh, like I have mentioned, in fluid-filled organs, when there is poor drainage or pure, poor circulation, then there is a likelihood that some cells will come and they will close up some fluids. Other influences are like hormonal imbalances in childbearing women at puberty, so that now we have things like ovarian cysts um, and uh, uh, also some forms of medication can also cause uh, the formation of cysts within our cavities. Essentially, cysts are easy to treat because uh, most of the time they go away on their own. And if they don't go away on their own, we can also drain them. Uh, you can drain the fluid, particularly if they're on your skin or somewhere superficial where you can see, you can just press them. Of course, you need to be hygienically prepared so that you do not again introduce uh, certain bacteria or viruses within the open wound, but you can drain them. And if they are big, we can actually surgically drain or remove them. But most of the time, cysts do go away on their own, which is a good thing. Now, if they don't go away, this is now where we are saying, if they don't go away and they keep increasing in number and in size, then there's a likelihood that there is a bigger problem than we can see, okay? So the greatest actually issue with cysts could occur if a cyst is in a location where it is interfering with other organs. So maybe it has, it is in the lungs and it is pressing against certain uh, blood vessels that, you know, take uh, oxygenated blood from the lungs to the rest of the body. In that case, then it would mean that your cyst needs to actually be surgically removed because it could now interfere with other issues of breathing and having your, your body oxygenated, okay? So those are uh, cysts and usually they are treatable and they are not cancerous, okay? But if they change in size, then seek medical advice. If they are too persistent and if they are changing in number, then it is important for you to seek medical advice. Uh, then we have now what we call uh, tumors. Now, when we mention a tumor, most of the time we think cancer. You know, that's the first one that comes into our minds, at least for, you know, lumps and swellings, we, we, can, we can just, you know, be there and we are not so anxious. But when you hear a tumor, there is a possibility that you will think of the worst. But we do have a classification of uh, tumors. So tumors can be classified into two categories. And one of them is what we call benign tumor. And the other one is what we call malignant. And malignant is now what is cancerous.
So benign is an uncancerous tumor. So like I mentioned is that tumor is a, a solid mass. We've talked about cysts, which are fluid mass. Now tumors are solid. They are solid masses. So they can either be benign or they can be uh, cancerous. Okay. Now, in case they are uh, benign, how do you actually know if, if you have a, a benign tumor? So one of the things that you can look out for is that a benign tumor is soft, okay? It has a tender feel. If it is on your skin or wherever it is, it has a tender, a tender feel. Then, uh, if your benign tumor has, you know, a defined area, once you touch it, if, for example, it is on your hand or on your face or wherever it is, you can tell the edges. It has distinct edges, okay? It has distinct edges. Then they also tend to move. That you press this way, it can move, uh, it can, uh, move up. If you just press from the side, it can move on the side. It is so they tend to be a bit, maybe well, we can say wobbly. You know, they they move a bit. They are not static at a certain point. And then another thing about benign tumors is that they tend not to keep growing. Okay, they tend not to keep growing. So they 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 once they have uh, developed, they they don't change in size. And most likely, they change downwards or they start shrinking away, okay? That can also indicate that whatever tumor that you are having actually does not have any form of cancerous cells. And then usually they have um, uh, what we call pain, a little pain, or they can also be painless. So the pain is not unbearable, so probably the pain will come in, especially because you're trying to touch, you know, you're trying to understand what they are all about, etc. But usually they are painless or they can have a small amount of pain. Now, one thing that is extremely important is that they do not metastasize or they don't go to other organs. They don't migrate. So if they are on your hand, they remain there. If they are on your neck, if they are on your back, wherever they are, they remain there. They don't tend to move through your blood system or the lymphatic system. They are localized at that one particular uh, place. And therefore, it means that a cancerous tumor is almost the opposite of what we are seeing is benign. Uh, for example, we say that benign tumors are localized, then cancerous tumors are not localized. A cancer usually what, have what you call a primary site, okay? A primary site where it has begun and it can move through your blood or through the lymphatic system. It can go to another place. If it started in your hand, it can go to your lungs, it can go to your head. And now those other sites where it has traveled are called secondary sites, okay? And uh, now we also have uh, uh, tum uh, malignant tumors not having a very defined edge. We talked about distinct edges. So once you touch, you don't actually feel the edges more clearly. So it has a sort of mass that has no defined edges. And then something is about a cancerous tumor is that it is solid hard. Like it, usually they are very hard. The other one we say they are soft and tender to touch, but cancerous tumors are hard. They are solid, hard to touch. Okay. And then most of the time they are painless and then they are immovable. Wherever it is, even if you press, you will not find it trying to escape that area. It remains static in that particular place. And of course, uh, usually they will have rapid growth. You will never have a cancerous tumor or lumpish or swelling that shrinks, then grows, then shrinks, then grows. That only happens when it is benign. So if you're having constant growth or a tumor that you're having and it doesn't change, 
then there's a likelihood that it could be cancerous. Now, something about the issue of cancerous and non-cancerous, the definition actually, or what defines cancer, is the fact that the body has been unable to control cell multiplication or cell growth, okay? So in our bodies, we usually have the mechanism of cell division because cells during maybe you have a wound, we need to repair that wound. Cells must multiply to make us new cells and new skin tissue, okay? But now when we are having cancer, it means that the control of when cells are needed and when they are not needed is not there. And again, usually cells have a life cycle. So there is a time when cells die and they die and that process is called apoptosis. So in this case of cancer, it means that old cells, destroyed cells, cells that are not, you know, well functioning, actually not destroyed. And that accumulation of all those types of cells is now what results to cancer. So cancerous cells are actually dangerous because they destroy the normal cells, okay? So when if you have cancer in a certain region like here, it means that the normal working cells within that area will actually be destroyed because they'll be deprived of energy. You see the cancerous cells are multiplying very fast, very rapidly. So they are going to take all the nutrients from the normal cells and the normal cells will end up uh, getting destroyed and non-functionless. And you see cancerous cells are not specialized, so they replace now the normal function with defunction or dysfunction or dysfunctioning cells and tissues. And that is now what causes issues with your organs, issues with other systems of the body, and eventually the whole body collapses. Now, benign, on the other hand, we are saying the only dangerous thing about benign is if it is pressing against another important or vital tissue. Otherwise, it doesn't destroy the normal cells surrounding it. Uh, it can only press against certain vital organs or certain vital vessels. And that is the time it could result into a problem. Because if it blocks a blood vessel, then it means that blood is uh, blocked from going to the particular organs that it's supposed to get to. Now, what actually causes benign tumors? Like, what could be some of those defining benign tumor causes? So one of them is radiation, exposure to toxins and radiation, the X-ray, ZTC. Uh, we can also have, you know, poor diet and lifestyle. You know, we need a life of exercise. We talked about infections. If you have a certain infection, there is a likelihood of inflammation. There is a likelihood of, you know, uh, swelling. So certain types of inflection. And if you're having lymph node inflammation, so that now, for example, around your neck, we have lymph glands here. They are all over. There are many. We have others under your armpit in your groin area. So if there is a certain form of lymph node inflammation, then you're going to have a certain swelling. And then if you have hormonal imbalances, uh, particularly in women and also in men, then there is also a likelihood that you're going to have certain benign masses and tissues. Now, cancerous ones could also be uh, caused by some of those uh, uh, we have looked at. So for example, if you're exposed to radiations, carcinogenic radiations and chemicals, if you're having uh, you know, viral infections such as HIV, we have uh, human papilloma viruses, hepatitis, viruses that cause liver cancer, you know, a certain lifestyle um, uh, uh, choices. For example, if you're taking tobacco and, uh, you know, you are smoking ETC. So those are some of the things. Now, another crucial one that usually we don't have any control over is what we call genetics or predisposition because of your family history. Somebody in your family had certain genetic uh, changes causing certain mutations within your genome. And that is now what is resulting to lack of control of growth of cells. And that results to overgrowth of cells that now eventually becomes cancer. So the greatest question here actually is, 
uh, all the swellings, lumps, uh, cysts, and tumors cancerous? And no, that is our answer, no. In fact, one out of nine uh, lumps and swelling or cyst or tumor is actually what is asked. The other nine are non-cancerous, okay? Then the other question could be, now I have a lump, so what next? So the first thing that usually will happen is that once you seek medical attention, there will be physical examination. Uh, whenever you have found it, they are going to palpitate. They are going to define the dimensions in terms of size. Is it soft? Is it hard? Does it have defined edges? They will also ask you uh, the general feeling. Are you feeling sickly? Uh, do you have any form of symptoms? Because most of the time, if it's non-cancerous, you don't have any symptoms. But if it's cancerous, there could be fever, you know, excessive coughing, a lot of fatigue among other symptoms that you could be experiencing they will also check about your history have you been vaccinated recently have you had any form of uh, injections have you been under certain types of medications are you allergic to any form of foods um, medicines and then what about your family history is there anyone in your family who has certain conditions certain swelling certain forms of acne, you know, that has persisted polycystic ovarian syndrome, cancer that has been present in your family, uh, chronic illnesses such as hypertension, etc. Then after they have tried to understand your physical, um, the, the physical dimensions of the swelling, your history, then they are going to recommend what we call imaging. You can have an ultrasound done. Usually that will be the first line because it doesn't expose you to any forms of radiation. And you can see that, you know, overexposure to radiation can actually cause cancerous tumors. And then if uh, the ultrasound indicates uh, uh, something in terms of size, it will also indicate if it has mass or it is fluid filled. Uh, then you can have more advanced tests like mammogram if it's breasts. We can have CT scans, you know, and so and so. Then we are going to have a diagnosis, which either will be benign or will be cancerous. So what is the way forward? Uh, the way forward in all this usually will be you need to have uh, self-care for each and every one of us. You need to know your body. You need to know when you have something that is not normal, either a symptom, a swelling, or anything. Because we have said there are swellings and lumps that are within our bodies where we cannot reach. So in such cases, then you need to know what are the symptoms. Again, it is important that you uh, embrace checkups. Because of even those that you cannot see, it is important to go for certain checkups. You know, go for a a full body checkup, go for screening, you know, screen for all types of cancer, screen for chronic illnesses, do hypertension tests, blood glucose, do, do cervical screening, do prostate screening, just do screening. If you can do it once a year, then that means that you can note any forms of changes within your blood system or any other that could have occurred superficially where you can be able to see. And finally, never ignore anything. If you find something is not, you know, it's not something you have known or seen before within your body, kindly do not ignore. Because ignoring could actually be um, early stages of a cancer development. Then you ignore it and it gets to a place where even if we know it's cancer, we don't have much treatment options except palliative care and that is not good at all because we know cancer detected early or any form of cancerous cells growing detected early are treatable okay but if you start detecting at stage two stage three stage four then that is a palliative care it it, it will not go towards a treatment uh intervention so that is all about lumps, swellings, cysts, and tumors. And like we have said, 
not all of them are cancer. In fact, 